Ooh, hey, 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 everyone. Anthony Fantano here, Internet's knuckliest, crackiest nerd. And it's time for another edition of the Weekly Track Roundup, where I tell you what I thought were some of the best and the worst tracks of the week. They're all linked down below so you can check them out for yourself. I quickly want to give a shout out to our sponsor in this video, the good people over at The Ridge. Ah, there it is. They make these nifty little minimalist wallet boys or or girls. I don't, I don't really think they have a gender or nothing. Uh, but anyway, they are sleek. They have m hot metal plates. <laughs> They're RFID blocking and uh, they fit nicely in your front pocket as well. I love these. Uh, love these little things. Been rocking mine for a long time now, and I wouldn't give it up for nobody. Uh, again, hit up that link down below. Promo code MELON, 10% off that order. And of course, down there, it's our Turntable Lab link. We get kicked back from that. It's our Patreon page. You can get some extra bonus monthly content from there. And uh, our weekly newsletter, which you should most definitely hit up if you don't want to miss a single piece of content, a single piece of content. All right. Worst tracks of the week. Worst trackerinos. Here we go. Let's do it. Bam. New one from a uh, YG, I, I guess from uh, the, the Amazon original motion picture coming to America uh, with Big Sean on the track. Five dollar beat. God awful chorus. Some of the worst lyrics I've ever heard out of YG's mouth. But hey, it's for an Amazon original movie soundtrack. I hope he caught a big fat check off it. Uh, we also have this new one from The Offspring. Uh, Let the bad times roll. It's uh, got some OK riffs on it, I guess. But overall. <laughs> It's, it's, it's some very dad punk rock. It's, it's very dad rock, but with a punk edge, not digging it. And then we have a new one from Green Day. Now, I will say this. This is certainly better than pretty much everything that was on Father of All, but uh, it's still a total hodgepodge and a mess with sections that sound like they're from uh, the 80s new wave and then some hard rock and then some like 50s stuff. It, it's just a, a little schizophrenic in terms of like all the sounds and aesthetics it's bringing up. I, I don't really get it. It's uh, it's a total uh, potpourri and uh, not that great of a song on top of it either. All right. Meh. The tracks I was not super crazy about, but I thought that they were th uh, they were worth Shouting out. Bam. New one from Wolf Alice. Uh, this new track over here has a very somber piano tune start. Builds up into a grand Flaming Lips-esque crescendo. Some 70s rock passages in the mix as well. The Last Man on Earth is the title. And uh, it's it's a solid uh, build and structure and everything. But um, I don't know. Not the best song I've heard from from Wolf Alice. I'll say that much. It's not very memorable and doesn't exactly strike the most unique sound or anything like that either. Uh, we have a new one from The Horrors, who surprisingly have come back. Uh, the track is Lout. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Who have surprisingly come back with uh, an industrial metal sound of all things. And I suppose it's not bad. The vocals leave a lot to be desired. I guess you could say this is what it would sound like if the Jesus and Mary chain went uh, industrial metal, I guess. Uh, we also have Post Malone doing a Hootie and the Blowfish cover. It's uh, pretty rich and thick instrumentally, but uh, I think Posty undersells it a little bit vocally, and that is just what it is. Uh, we have a new one from Lil Texas and Andy the Core rock star. It is deafening. It is searing to the eardrums. Uh, it's loud. It is one of the noisiest tracks I think Lil Texas has ever been involved <laughs> with, um, to the point where it's like, grating and painful to listen to a little bit. Uh, I, I think structurally it could be a lot better though, because one piece or section of the song really just kind of crashes violently into the next without much in terms of like transitioning, building, breathing, momentum. It's, it's really just like uh, everything but the kitchen sink kind of flying at you at once on this one. But maybe, uh, maybe that's the appeal. Who knows? Uh, we also have a new one from IDK, Two Cents. It's a... Uh, all right. I mean, you know, it's got a cool basic beat, decent flows, uh, just not much in terms of memorables on the lyrical side. And the chorus is a bit of a dud, too. Uh, Chai 
has come through with a track featuring Rick Wilson on it, maybe Chocolate Chips, has a bit of an R&B flair to it. Um, not too bad, uh, excuse me, not too bad. Uh, certainly excited still for their uh, uh, new LP, but doesn't uh, you know quite carry the edge that a lot of their... Uh, stuff that's built them up until this point has. Uh, We have also another one from Chad Van Galen building up to that new album release. This one over here is a uh, very spacey, uh, weird, and I guess uh, uh, somewhat left field indie rock cut that uh, doesn't really have that strong of a tune supporting it. Uh, You know, if you like the band Women and you kind of like the, you know, production vibe that that band strikes up, I mean, you know, Chad has worked uh, pretty extensively with that band when they were, uh, you know, active back in the day. Uh, You'll probably dig on at least the the sound this song is uh, is delivering. Uh, Then we also have a new one from Aries, YouTuber, producer, songwriter, content creator extraordinaire. He has come through with a new one titled Ditto. And, uh, you know, it's it's got almost like a top 40 kind of flair to it, aside from the super harsh shots of percussion throughout the track. Uh, I think it's one of his more solid tunes. Uh, you know, not exactly my style per se, but uh, certainly worth a nod and an admirable effort on his part. Looking forward to continu- uh, continuing to see the guy grow. Uh, then we have a new one from... Uh, an artist that we shouted out a little while ago, Anna Fox Rachinsky, no better. Uh, this one is not quite as direct or uh, angular on the guitar side as her last single. A uh, bit of a ballad with some prominent keys uh, that I like the vibe of it. I think it starts out pretty strong. The vocal end of things is uh, quite lovely, but uh, I, I think the the songwriting and the structure overall is a little maybe too indirect. Um, I wish the track kind of got to where it wanted to go a bit faster. Um, As a result, I feel like it falls a little flat, but uh, still looking forward to the new album regardless. Uh, We've also got one from uh, a posthumous track, a record on the way via Sacred Bones from uh, Alan Vega of uh, the group Suicide, a music legend, underground legend, uh, synth punk god, uh, I don't. I don't think you could say enough. Uh, uh, you know, nice things about the guy and his body of work. Um, you guys might remember that I loved his uh, his last record, his Swan Song record, it quite a bit. Uh, great album all around. Uh, but uh, this track over here uh, strikes more of, uh, I guess, a very uh, electro industrial kind of vibe, a lot of spoken word. Uh, it's quite dark. It's quite foreboding. Um, aesthetically and conceptually, nothing you know too new for Alan across the board. But uh, you know, if you're a fan of his work and you understand his body of work and you kind of get where he's coming from creatively, uh, this should certainly kind of, you know, be in your wheelhouse, be, uh, you know, as expected, uh, you know, to hear from him. Uh, is it one of the best things I've ever heard from him in this style? Not necessarily, but uh, it's certainly a project that uh, someone is a fan of, you know, his uh, back catalog, and especially, you know, a lot of that early suicide stuff I'm going to be looking out for, for sure. All right. Uh, best tracks, best tracks of the week. The ones that really stood out to me were, bam, this new one from Youth Code and King Yosef. Uh, it's got a bit of an electro industrial vibe to it. Super harsh, super heavy in your face. Great groove. Love the vocal dynamics on this track as well. Um, been, you know, aware of Youth Code's work uh, for a bit. And I think this is uh, easily one of the best tracks I've heard out of the project. We also have a new one from Show Me the Body, who are totally fucking rocking their way uh, through this new track, Survival. It's heavy, it's hard hitting, it is hardcore at its nastiest. Uh, sorry, uh, Survive is the track, not Survival, but uh, Survive. Uh, it's going to be coming through on a new EP that they are uh, dropping soon, Hope, soon Hope, and uh, uh, looking forward to that, certainly. Uh, we also have uh, one from Shelly, FKA Dram. So Dram has changed the name over to Shelly, new track Exposure, super funky, soulful R&B that is a little bit more serious in tone than the stuff that uh, I'm sure you guys remember from uh, Shelly's last record or, you know, last record as Dram. And uh, yeah, while it is more serious in tone, a lot of those vocal eccentricities still carry over and uh, instrumental is quite good and it's a very sensual song as well. Give it a try. 
All right, we have uh, one from Shamir as well, who is uh, as prolific as ever, dropping a Billie Eilish cover, Ocean Eyes, which is frankly a track that when I first heard it from Miss Eilish, I, I wasn't really a fan. I mean, it's not really Billie's work, her early work that won me over. It was, uh, you know, really everything off of her debut full length album. Uh, but Shamir has envisioned a version of this song over here that's actually wowed me quite a bit. Uh, you know, love the vocal approach on this one, love how extravagant and lush the instrumental is. Uh, this is easily some of the best production Shamir has been on in years. And uh, yeah, uh, totally killed it on every front. I just love this cover. I think it's a great cover. And shout out to Shamir for, uh, for doing it. All right, we have a new one from Pop Smoke AP. Banger, 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 banger. Yes, it's uh, very much in a drill vein. Super catchy hook. And uh, the bass line on this one is pretty unique. I would love to hear uh, more drill tracks into the future that uh, get this ambitious with the bass line. And the bass is usually pretty... Uh, prominent with drill music in general, you know, especially a lot of this uh, new Brooklyn stuff, this new New York wave of, uh, of drill. But um, I don't know, there's just something about how bouncy and nimble and I guess uh, uh, busy the baseline is on this one. It's a, a little unlikely, but totally works and is a, a quite stellar, makes the song kind of unique in my view. Uh, we also have this new one from Petey and Maya Follick. Um, Maya's work I've heard here and there. I think this is a really stunning bit of indie pop over here. Uh, really stellar vocal performances from both artists as well. And I just like how uh, energized and uh, infectious the song is all around. Don't miss out on it. And we also have a new one over here from No Name. Rainforest is the title. It is jazzy. It is lyrical. It is profound. And from what I understand, we have some production from The Count on this one too. Killer fantastic um no name is just sounding as uh uh i guess uh put together as ever artistically just uh loving her work and hoping that we get an album at some point uh soon all right we have a new one also from caro caro bonito uh <laughs> sorry i'm just really hyped because this song over here is my god one of the best Caro Caro tracks ever, The Princess and the Clock. Uh, I feel like the trio goes backward to go forward a little bit on this one because they they dial it back to that uh, electropop vibe that they kind of broke out onto the scene with, but then they give it this really panoramic, extravagant uh, bit of production and uh, a really solid vocal performance too. Uh, great tune all around as well. I think this is one of caro caro benito's most ambitious tracks ever while simultaneously like holding to the core sounds and influences that uh you know people kind of got onto the caro caro train with uh, to begin with like when benito generation came out so uh, uh really looking forward to the next project and looking forward to uh, uh hearing the trio hopefully like expand on uh these sounds because i feel like you know in a lot of respects th this is kind of the shit they they do best in a way all right uh skigi New one from uh, Jid, very profound, socially conscious, and witty lyrical cut from him with some insane production. Uh, solid hook as well. I recommend anybody uh, unfamiliar with the history of what he's rapping about on this track, most definitely like look it up, dive into it. The guy is like spitting some real fucking facts on this one. All right, we also have uh, Freddie Gibbs over here who has uh, put out this Gil Scott Heron cover of the track Winter in America. Um, you know, Gibbs has has been singing on a lot of tracks recently from time to time. And I think this is actually one of his better vocal performances. And the moments in which he lacks a little bit vocally on this track, that's kind of made up for with the uh, instrumental uh, this time around. I think the instrumental on this one is immaculate as well and hits a really lush peak on the back end, which was uh, totally necessary and complimentary. I think it's just a great cover all around. Uh, we also have a Delete Zeke over here. 52 Blue Mondays is the song. If you are into hyper pop, uh, try it out, but uh, don't sort of take this as some kind of like weird Gex ripoff or anything like that because there are a lot of like very harsh, noisy, and experimental elements about the production. A lot of break beats as well. Um, it's certainly a, a unique approach and uh, uh, I guess variation for, uh, uh, for this style and, uh, and direction. Give it a try, give it a shot. All right, we also have a new one from Dinosaur Jr. I Ran Away. It features Kurt Vile as well, and uh, uh, 
J Mascus just uh, sounds like his usual J Mascus <laughs> self on the track, but the hook definitely pops, and I love the guitar work on this one as well. Uh, the guitar work on Dino Jr.'s stuff is usually very melodic and sweet and colorful. Uh, you know, that's nothing new, but uh, Kurt definitely adds a refreshing dynamic to the track as well that's, uh, uh, you know, worth checking out. Uh, we've got this uh, uh, new version of Cosmic from the Denzel Curry and Kenny Beats project Unlocked. Alchemist on production this time, Joey Badass feature too. Uh, just loving the revision on this one. It's really uh, creative, makes Denzel's voice pop even more. And I like the insane gurgling analog bass throughout this one and the jazzy transitions on the beat. I think it's uh, quite awesome. We've also got uh, Chloe and Hallie. They have dropped the Chrome version of their record, Ungodly Hour, which if you guys remember, I thought that one was quite good. And uh, they've put a few extra tracks on it. Hazy is the title of this one. And uh, it has some insane production, super, uh, I guess, uh, uh, unique vocal lines, quite dark as well, like easily one of the darkest tracks to come out of the batch of songs connected to this album. And uh, yeah, just all around, uh, I don't know, Chloe and Hallie just continue to expose their creativity to the world and uh, uh, also just show like their production prowess as well and how that just like informs uh, the unique and very directions that they take every track that they uh, drop in because Chloe and Hallie are not ones to repeat themselves, you know, when they're dropping new stuff and I love that this uh, uh, track just sounds so radically different than a lot of other stuff off of the uh, Ungodly Hour record. All right, we have a Nuka Estoy, uh, this track over here from an artist that just dropped uh, the full version of their album this past Friday, Scene C. Tangana. Um, this artist is uh, uh, taking a lot of uh, bossa nova influences a lot of latin influences across the board and doing some really left field almost like indiafied takes on a lot of that stuff and you know while um i can't say that i've heard you know enough of it enough times to really make uh you know an informed description of all of it yet um i'm very intrigued by what i'm hearing so far um and uh, certainly I'm looking forward to diving deeper into it and I'm even, uh, you know, tempted at this point to uh, do a review at, at some time. Um, I hope I end up, you know, following through and, and doing that because I, I would hate for the next six months to have my head torn off in every direction about <laughs> why did you review that record? Why did you review that record? But, uh, you know, I, I am saying like, check this out for yourselves because there is some really cool stuff going on uh, on this new uh, C record for sure. All right, we have uh, uh, Bill Callahan. Once again, with Bonnie Prince Billy doing a cover, I Want to Go to the Beach, Iggy Pop, and it's a pretty insane version <laughs> with some weird groovy production and uh, just wild vocal harmonies that are uh, really messy and sort of endearing as well. I love how every new cover from these two, because they've just been dropping cover after cover after cover for weeks now, uh, I love how every new cover just seems to go further off the rails or uh, feature an artist uh, that, that seems, wow, they're covering that, just more and more unlikely. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, I recommend it. I think it's quite fun for uh, uh, Bill and Bonnie and Iggy Pop fans alike. Uh, and we also have this uh, one from Alice Longyu Gao that I wanted to uh, shout out over here. This may be the, lo the last one we're talking about here. Uh, she Abunai is the name of the track, and it is a wild freaking banger. Just loving the creativity that is coming out of Alice's work as of late. And uh, yeah, she just uh, continues to kill it, in my opinion. Um, while, you know, she's not like strictly a hyper pop artist, you know, she very much operates in those futuristic pop circles and her, you know, tracks for the most part are quite adventurous, quite experimental, quite odd and, uh, you know, colorful, creative and, uh, uh, you know, certainly somebody who's uh, looking forward and not backward in this uh, new underground generation of pop artists, uh, Muramasa and also Bulo on the song as well. And uh, that is the weekly track roundup, everybody. That is the weekly track roundup. I hope you uh, got some good recommendations out of this video. Everything linked down below. Check it out for yourself. And uh, yeah, you're the best. Mwah! Anthony Fantano, weekly tracks forever. <laughs>